In the previous unit of this MOOC, we explored articulatory phonetics, the study of the ways that humans produce speech. We will move on to the next area of theoretical linguistics in this unit, the study of phonology. It might seem strange that two areas of theoretical linguistics are devoted to the study of sound. We've already learned about sounds. Isn't it time to learn about words? You might ask yourself. While these two areas do study sound, the crucial difference between them will become clear by the end of this unit. Welcome to episode 3.1. I am James, a lecturer of linguistics at Guangdong University of Foreign Studies. We learned about the IPA in Unit 2 of this MOOC, the system of symbols which can represent the sounds in all the world's languages. Your knowledge of the IPA mustn't be confined to phonetics only, as we all build upon your existing knowledge in this unit. From this point in your journey into linguistics, you not only need to decipher the pronunciation of IPA symbols, but you also need to transcribe what you hear or what you read into IPA symbols. For that reason, I want to share some tips with you to ensure your IPA transcriptions are as accurate as possible. 1. Always use only two brackets when transcribing speech. One at the beginning of the text, another at the end. You use two brackets if you are transcribing one word, one sentence, one paragraph, and so on. Therefore, each word does not have brackets. 2. The IPA does not have capital letters, even if you are transcribing the first letter of a sentence, a name, or an acronym. Thus, BBC is transcribed as BBC, not BBC. 3. Do not use punctuation, even if you are transcribing a paragraph with several full stops and commas. 4. Do not use double letters for a single sound. English spelling is complex and sometimes arbitrary. If there is only one sound, you must only transcribe one symbol. Thus, there are two written T in bottle, but only one T symbol. 5. Many symbols look very similar to other IPA symbols and also to English letters. Thus, make sure you write the correct symbol. For example, a is a different sound to r, and y is not the first consonant in job. 6. Do not include silent letters. Remember that these are a feature of English spelling, not English pronunciation. Thus, don't write w in the word sword. S W O R D because it is pronounced sort. We can define phonology as the study of the ways that sounds are organized and structured in a language. It aims to describe the system and patterns of these sounds and the rules that govern their distribution. All languages have different phonological rules for the distribution of sounds. For example, the voiced velar nasal ng cannot be the first sound of a syllable in English, or even be its own syllable. But in three southern Chinese languages, Cantonese, Hakka, and Hokkien, it can be syllabic. You may even know some people with the family name ng. Have you heard of the famous Hong Kong SAR film director Mm, you some. Thus, English and these Chinese languages have different phonological rules about the organization of ng. 
This is one area of study within phonology. Anyway, the definition I just mentioned is a very abstract concept. So let's begin with something more concrete. The most basic concept in phonology is that, for any sound, there are probably several slightly different ways to pronounce it. This means that almost every IPA sound that we discussed in the previous unit is a category of sound. Because a category naturally has members, in this case, the members of each IPA sound category are the different ways to pronounce each sound. That probably sounds very confusing. So, as an analogy, let's look at a non-phonological example, cans. There are different types of cans, but they are all members of the category can. You can see four cans on the screen. The first two are perhaps the most prototypical, because they are both cans of a drink. The third is more unusual, because it contains pre-cooked slices of carrot that are ready to eat. Perhaps this type of can is uncommon in China, but it is very common for busy white-collar workers in the West. However, I'm sure everyone will agree that the fourth can is one of the strangest things they have ever seen. An entire cooked chicken in a can. Nevertheless, these are all cans. Therefore, you could describe a can of coke as a can, a category of the object, or you could describe it as a can of coke, which is a specific example of the category. Both of these descriptions are correct, because they are both two ways to represent the same thing. The concept I mentioned above, that each IPA sound is a category, and the members of each category are the different ways to pronounce that sound, follows exactly the same principle as the two ways to describe a can of coke. Because of this, when we transcribe the IPA for a sound, we either write the IPA for the category, or the IPA for the specific example of that category. But how do we know which sound represents the category? That will become clear soon. Let's explore a phonological example of this concept. The difference between cat and cat. The last sound of the second word I just said is called the glottal plosive, which I introduced in the previous unit. To make this sound, the vocal cords completely close and then completely reopen. You can see this in the image on the screen, along with the position of the vocal cords for voiced and voiceless sounds. When we speak quickly, we can use this sound instead of t. However, it is impossible to say this sound on its own, and it is also never at the beginning of a word, only in the middle or at the end. It also sounds strange when we use this sound in one word on its own. However, if we have a long, flowing conversation and we are speaking quickly, then it is very natural to use this sound many times. In the following example, the t in cat can become the glottal plosive. There is a cat over there. Most of the time, we say cat. However, we might sometimes say cat. There is a cat over there. Nevertheless, both the speaker and the listener know that cat is simply one of the possible ways to say cat. Therefore, both the glottal plosive and t are members of the same category, but only one of these sounds can be selected as the head of the category. Which sound do you think is the head of the category? It must be t. 
but white. Remember that the glossal plosive is a member of the sound category t. Of course, we can also say cat if we speak fast. So t is also one of the ways to say the sound category. This means that t is also a member of the category t. But why has t been selected as the head of the category of sound? The glottal plosive cannot be the head of the category instead of t, because not every t can be replaced with the glottal plosive. For example, the glottal plosive can never be at the beginning of a word, so it is impossible to say today with the t as the glottal plosive. Therefore, t can be used in every situation that the glottal plosive can be used in but not vice versa. By now, you can see that there is an important difference between the category of the sound and the different ways to actually say this category of sound. To represent this difference, there are two types of brackets. Square brackets and slanted brackets. We will continue this discussion in the next episode. Before we finish, please answer some questions.